Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this privilege that we have to gather in your name. We thank you that we get to spend time with you. Lord, we thank you that we have this open time where we can wait upon you, wait in your presence. Asking, Father, that heaven would just invade this space, that you would just move in a special way. Lord, I'm asking that we would become more like you. Change us, oh God, from the inside out, I pray, as we wait in your presence. And God, we are believing, we're setting ourselves up right now for an atmosphere of faith to believe that all things are possible. Hallelujah. Can we just do that right now? Can we just uh, extend our hands to the Lord? We just believe. We put our trust in you. We put our hope in you. Hallelujah. We're believing to see evidence tonight of your mighty hand that is at work. Thank you for what you did this morning. But God, we came back because we want more. And we know that there is more to be had. We love you, Lord.
presence. Speak to us, O Lord. We want to encounter you in a fresh way tonight. We make room for you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Circumcise our hearts. surrender our will. We surrender our will to you tonight. God, you have our yes. You have our yes, Lord.
Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the name of Jesus. Father, the scripture makes it clear there's no other name like Jesus, that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Father, we know there's healing in the name of yes, Jesus. We know there's deliverance, restoration in the name of Jesus. Everything we can possibly need, we find it in Jesus. And Father God, we've made the declaration, Lord, we're standing on your word that there is no rival because there's none other like you. So God, we've made the declaration and God, we have filled this house with praises to you. And I am asking you, dear God, to come, to come and have your way in this place, Father God, as we offer you a throne of praise, oh God, come and exercise your authority. And because there is no rival to you, then God, I pray that where healing is needed, that there'll be health. I pray where deliverance is needed, that there'll be freedom. I pray that where transformation is needed, that indeed there'll be change. Because you have no rival. Nothing, no one can stand against you. So God, I'm asking, have your way. Move among us, Lord, as we continue our time together, as we receive your word, as we take time to call out to you, to open our hearts to you, oh God, just do what only you can do. And continue, Father, to conform us to the image of your son, Jesus Christ, that indeed, Father, we would be more like him. Granted, we pray. 
So God, this room is filled with hungry, expectant hearts. And I know, Lord, that you always satisfy the hungry. So, Father, we're expecting you to move and to do what only you can do. We love you, God. We honor you. We put our faith and confidence in you. And, Lord, we do all of this because of the strong and mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, turn around. You can even walk around. Find a few people. Greet somebody you haven't greeted yet or greet somebody you haven't met yet. Introduce yourself and welcome them. back this evening to a special time that we call for this evening service, and we're grateful. We're grateful for the ministry of our brother this morning. Brother Fernando was with us, and we just thought, well, if we're going to have him here in the States, we're going to keep him here and, and call for a special gathering in the evening. And when he said that he was open to doing that and emphasizing a night of expectancy, Believe in God to do the miraculous in our lives. And I thought, well, of course we want to do that. Of course we'd want to get together to do that. You know, how do you, how can you say no to that, right? When you're beginning the Christmas season, a season of miracles, I don't think we just want to read about the amazing things that God did in the Bible when we have this amazing God who's always doing and wants to do amazing things in us and through us. So that's why we're here this evening. This morning I mentioned that we are receiving a love offering for our brother Fernando and his ministry. And those of you who were not able to participate, you can take care of that this evening in a variety of ways. You can do that via text. There's a designation there that says Fernando or through the mail or online. Or of course you can do it in person by using the boxes in the back. If you do cut a check, make it out to Auburn Hills Christian Center designated Fernando, and we'll make sure that everything that comes in, of course, goes to his ministry, but that'll just make it easier for us. So, Brother Fernando, please come. We want you to take your liberty. Just give him a hand. Welcome him as he comes to the pulpit. <clears throat> Bless you, my brother. Take your liberty. Ay, 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 I'm back. I'm back at Auburn Hills. So good to be with you. So good. Have a seat. Have a seat. If you haven't met me already, my name is Fernando. Um, the last name uh, is Di Carvalho. If you can pronounce it, I'll give you 10 bucks. I mean, no one can pronounce that one. Ah, yeah, there's some Brazilian people in the house. I know, I know. You're cheating now. Um, what an awesome morning we had. How many of you were here in the morning? Woo-hoo! Thank you, Jesus. I was thanking God. I went to the hotel, and I was thanking God for a full altar, packed with people coming to Jesus, running uh, to say, yes, Jesus, I believe. Don't you love faith? So holy, isn't it? Today is about faith, tonight. We are, you know, our miracle is just a step of faith away. Do you know that? It's just a step of faith away. Jesus has made it possible. Everything is possible in the name of Jesus. I know so, you know, because he turned this crazy heart of mine, this hard heart of mine into a heart of flesh. That's a miracle, one that's pliable, one that can receive spiritual things, a relationship was birthed all in the name of Jesus. Nobody can take that away from me or you. Amen? Uh, the miracle of salvation. I have a message that I'm calling, your miracle is in the miracle man. Your miracle 
is in the miracle man. Um, I, have, I have a scripture, if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to be in the Bible the entire time, all right? How many of you love the Bible? Yes. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready to see a miracle tonight. Now tell your neighbor, I believe that Jesus can do anything we ask in his name. Oh, yo, yo, it's starting good already. It is starting good already. There's faith in the house. Are you in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2? When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? All of you know who John is, right? He was the one that was prophesied that would come and level the mountains, who would open up a way for the Messiah to come. So he is expecting supernatural, powerful, anointed one to come. And so he says here, while he was still in prison, are you the one, Jesus, who is to come, or should we expect someone else? I love Jesus' reply in verse 4. Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. I brought a passport with me. He seems to be one of my best friends. We hang out together a lot nowadays because I travel so much. This is my ID. I don't get anywhere. I just came back from Norway, and they will ask me right away, I don't have to be too basic with you. You know that if I don't have this blue thing, come on now. I'm staying home. This proves my identity to the rest of the world. And signs and wonders. See, when the blind eye open, when the dead is raised, when the paralyzed walk, It is Jesus taking his passport and showing the TSA, he is, I am, who I say that I am. Can you look at the picture? And they see the cross, and they see the blood of Jesus, and they see their sacrifice, and he shows the power that is shown on earth as it is in heaven. And then the city is open. The heart is open. A nation is open. Are you with me? Signs and wonders and miracles isn't weird. Is the ID of Jesus Christ. When he came 2,000 years ago, he came healing the sick. And that was showing everyone, I am who I say that I am. And then I fought for this blue passport. Ho, ho, ho. Ay, ay, ay. Can I talk to you about some immigrant conversation? I had a green one. Didn't get me nowhere. I love Brazil. But it just got me out of Brazil and right back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, and that was just around South America, maybe. But then I got the blue passport. I don't know. The blue passport has like extra favor in the world. <laughs> Can I tell you that story real quick? I mean, it's a good, it's a good story. Before we, we continue into the word, you will love this. I was an illegal immigrant. Let me just say how it is. There is no 
uh, embassy, no, no police around, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> so so I, 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 was, I was in the gray area with the U.S., okay? My, my, my paperwork was in progress all the time, in process, you know? It's like my visa to Kenya. I had applied it. I never got a response from the U.S., so I was in limbo for a long time. And then I gave my life to Jesus, um, and I had the opportunity to apply for my, for my passport and for my, you know, citizenship. Have I ever told you that story? At that time, I was selling sandwiches. I owned a sandwich business. And, um, and I, I'll tell you that because of my, my background, I didn't have a Christian background, no moral values, no perimeters really put in place. Are you with me? So I did whatever I wanted, right? And there was all kinds of things that I did with the business that were not legal. Paid people under the table. I did all of this stuff, you know. And um, now I'm, I'm applying for citizenship of the United States, and they're asking me all kinds of questions to make sure that I am a man of integrity and that I belong in the land of the free and the brave. Can I just speak honest to you just how it was, okay? I don't need to hide anything today. I'm free in Jesus Christ. He has cleansed me. He has he has put a platform under my feet that I get to stand on today with pride. Uh, amen. A clear conscience. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can give you a clear conscience. I've, you're asking for a vacation. Just get a clear conscience. You don't need to go on vacation no more, and it's free. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey. So, but I had a bag of lies that I had to walk into the interview to get my uh, citizenship. Are you with me? And, uh, and I remember I had just given my life to Jesus, and I was feeling like I cannot lie and tell the immigration everything that I've been doing. They're going to ask me all these questions. I'm going to hand them a bag of lies. Are you with me? So I met with a Christian friend of mine, and we prayed all morning since 5 a.m. before the 7 a.m. interview. And, um, and I threw that. Uh, so I, and, and I walked into the, the interview at 7, and I'm telling you, uh, I was guilty, and I knew it. And I was ready to get deported that morning because I made a deal with Jesus. I said, Jesus... If, um, if they ask me anything, I'm going to tell them exactly like it is. I'm telling them the truth. And then you just have to have my back, whatever they deport me to. They're going to, they're going to handcuff me right at that room. But I, I, I cannot lie to them anymore. There's no way. I love you so much. I want to be close to you. I don't want to jeopardize our relationship, even if it is for my dream of being in the U.S. I, I wanted to throw up on my way to the interview. I don't know if you know the feeling, but it was one of those that you have a, I worked my whole life to be in this country. I sacrificed family and friends, and I was homeless. I mean, all of it, it was all coming to an end. So I walk in, and I'm, I'm there shaking. The heart is coming out of my chest. And they call my name. Fernando. I grabbed my bag of lies. I walked into the room. And the immigration officer says like this. Fernando? Mike? Listen. This guy has been my customer for over four years. I've been selling him his tuna sandwich with lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and, and Italian dressing and oregano on top. I know his sandwich, his family. I sit down with him all the time. I have been serving the immigration officer.
he says to me, Fernando, I didn't know you're not an American. Welcome to the United States. <laughs> Hallelujah. We serve a Jesus whose ID, whose passport is signs and wonders and miracles. Can I preach to you, church? If you just take a step in faith, if you just make a move, let Jesus move on your behalf and show him, show you, show all of his ID. He will open that passport. He will get Mike in front of you. Mike, can you believe I've been serving my miracle for four years and I didn't know? <laughs> Welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> Come on, if that doesn't make you dance a little bit. If that doesn't make you move just a little bit. If that doesn't get you going a little bit. You can't make this stuff up. It's his ID. It's his passport. John was like, hey, are you really the anointed one, Jesus? Are you the one that all of our people have been expecting for dozens and dozens and hundreds of years? Are you the one? Please tell me because I'm here in prison and they're telling me they're going to cut my head off. And before I go, I just need to know, are you the one? Jesus replied, go back and tell John, show him my passport. Tell him what you hear and what you see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed all over the world. Oi, oi, oi. There's a few different types of faith. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag right now. I'm just telling you, it don't matter what kind of faith you got. It's enough faith. Hallelujah. For Jesus to show you his passport. There's such a thing as desperate faith. Come on now. Any desperate people in the house. Can I preach to you for about 20 minutes? And then we're going to pray for the sick. We are going to cast out demons. We're going to prophesy. We're going to be in the presence of God. We are going to worship Jesus. And we're going to have a big Jesus party at Auburn Hills. Can we do that? It all begins with the Word of God. Amen? Mark chapter 5. We find one, one of my favorite stories. I say that to my team all the time. They... They think I have like 250 favorite stories by now. But this, this, this is on the top of the list. Mark chapter 5, if you have your Bibles there. You find um, a man by the name of Jairus. When Jesus, this is verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side to the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Ha. Huh. Right there, I see desperate. There is no greater pain for any parent. Come on up. No greater pain than seeing your son or your daughter hurting and in pain, let alone dying. This dad, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm telling you, I have a son, he's seven, and I have a little girl, she's five, Isabella. I mean, she will melt you just by looking at you. I think of my little girl dying, I'm thinking, desperate will move in quick. 
Jairus have been hearing about this Jesus who is healing the sick, who is casting out demons, who is showing his passport everywhere. And he said, this is my turn. I'm going to find this man, and I'm going to do everything I can to drop in front of him, to be seen, so that I might have a chance for him to come to my home. Please come and put your hand on her so that she would be healed and live. Don't you love his faith? He's already prophesying. He's already speaking faith. He's already trusting God. Come on. I'm, 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 I'm killing every doubt out of the room now. Are you with me? I want to break doubt. That's why I've been praying for you. No doubt in the room. There's faith in the room today for everything that you are asking for. So Jesus went with him. I love that so much. That's a word for any of you. If you step in faith and you ask Jesus, Jesus will go with you. He's a loving dad. He's a good dad. He wants the best for his children. But right as he was going to see the little girl, a crowd was pressing in everywhere around Jesus. And we find in Mark chapter 5 that now there's another character. This lady has been bleeding for 12 years. And the Bible says, and I think it's really the crux of this entire verse because it says like this in verse 25. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. She had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better in the hands of those who are supposed to be caring for her, now she has grown worse. Now we got two desperate people. One who is a synagogue leader who was willing to take his pride and put it on the side. You know, how many of you know that positions has a way of adding pride to our hearts? An upgrade. Are you with me? I, mean, I'm, I am who I am, and I don't want to, I'm better than everyone, and, and I'm, I'm the leader of this house, and, and, and that therefore I can't submit. Are you with me? That man is no longer on the top of his position. He's on his knees in front of Jesus because he's desperate. And now Jesus is on his way, and he stops. Even though the girl is dying, Jesus stops. And I'll tell you what happens here. This woman who is bleeding has spent all she had, she's fighting through the crowd she is desperate come on somebody you don't even have a crowd to fight for are you with me you can just walk to the altar she is fighting through the crowd pushing people around because she has no one else to turn to no money because she spent all she had every doctor she knows didn't care didn't care didn't, was not able to care for her and she grew worse it's been 12 years that way she has nobody else now jesus is in front of her and she is going after him like a hungry bulldog she pushes everybody too and he and she touches cloak of Jesus. Ay, ay, ay. I love this story so much. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his cloak, I will be healed. What a face. Immediately, Verse 29 says, come on now, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. 
He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? And the disciples were like, Come on, Jesus. You see the people crowding against you. Everyone is touching you. I am, oh, man, this part of the message is so good. Everyone has been touching Jesus. That was kind of like a duh, Jesus. Everyone is touching you. But this woman touched him differently. And the difference be between everyone and her is found in the next couple of verses. Jesus kept looking around. And don't you love that he was, he, he, that was so exciting for Jesus, even though the disciples were kind of like, come on, Jesus, everyone is touching you. Jesus, no, I want her. He's pursuing her now. Something is exciting took place for him. Then the women, knowing that what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Isn't it interesting that he doesn't say, I have healed you, go home. He says, your faith has healed you. Something powerful about faith. When you move in faith, Jesus moved mountains for you. When you take that step of saying, Jesus, I trust you that you can do the extraordinary, Jesus was moved for you. I had this, I had this guy in Burundi. Oh, my God. Goodness, this was one of those powerful miracles that I will carry me and tell my grandchildren about. Uh, we had probably 45,000 people in the crowd in Bunjubura, Burundi, a landlocked country, the poorest nation of the entire continent of Africa. And I was carrying the demon possessed to the freedom tent. That was my job that night. And uh, I'm going back and forth, just carrying the demon possessed, dropping them in the freedom temp, going back to the crowd, and carrying the demon possessed to the crowd. Just going back and forth. As I'm walking back to grab somebody else, somebody grabs me by the arm on the crowd and really just pulls me. He says, sir, please, give me one minute. I said, yes, sir. I was kind of on a mission, you know. And I had to kind of come back to the moment here. He says, yeah, I said, yes, sir. He says, my friend, we have walked for miles to get here. A half a day to get here. Because we know that Jesus is in this place. And my friend is blind. He's my best friend. I'm his guide. And I walked him here to be healed. I looked at his friend and both of his eyes had so much cataracts. Both were like white not just the white ball but the whole thing was white and I said well let's pray and so I put my hand on his head three times I prayed Jesus heal him amen and I took my hand off and nothing happened on the third time I said to him come back tomorrow there's one more night you know I'm sorry and I walked away as I'm walking away Jesus says to me Walk back there, lay hand on that boy's head, and pray. And I, for a second, I go, did I, did I hear that? Or is this my head? Well, let's find out. <laughs> I walked back. I said, hey, one more minute. When I put my hand on his head, I am telling you just like it is today. I felt another hand putting his hand on my hand. And when that happened, he began to shake like this. I thought he was demon-possessed. It was like I just, he, he just, he was just getting shocked, right? And something just touched him. And he started to shake like this. 
and I opened my eyes to see if there was another hand on top of my head. Are you with me? There was nothing there. I was just a feeling at the moment. But I remember pulling my hand off, and this guy went like this. I can see. And his friend dropped to his knees in front of me. He's grabbed my, you healed my friend. You healed my friend. And I stood him up and I said, sir, sir, I didn't heal your friend. He's the miracle worker. It's Jesus Christ. He is the one that died 2,000 years ago from our sins. He is the one who is the miracle man. Hallelujah. Jesus finishes with the women and goes to Jairus' house. And he takes all the people that are just crying there and maybe people with a little bit of doubt. Come on. And he takes them out of the room and he brings in the people with faith because now the little girl is dead. He comes in and says, Talitakum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished, and he gave strict orders for them not to tell anyone. This man Jairus came with faith. And sometimes you might even be disappointed because you walked in faith before. You didn't see the miracle you wanted to see. But he stood there by Jesus. And Jesus came to his house and raised his little girl to life. And I'm here to tell you, you no matter what kind of pain you came here with, what kind of request you came here with, I don't know what kind of diagnose you have received. It doesn't matter how big that obstacle is. If you just take a step of faith, not towards me, but towards Jesus Christ, the miracle man, your miracle will be standing there, ready to hug you, ready to love you, ready to embrace you, ready to give you your breakthrough. Maybe you came here and you've been trying to speak in other tongues. You're trying to move as an evangelist and you, you're trying to lay hands on the sea. I don't know what kind of requests you have made to God before you came here tonight. I'm here to tell you, the miracle is in the miracle man. The miracle is in Jesus Christ. Faith is like a key. I remember coming home tired from work once, and uh, how many of you know what a snowy, cold day is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was one of those days, and I'm coming from Africa, so I, I'm not ready for cold and snow. Are you with me? I'm not really dressed properly at all. My wife and kids are in somebody else's home with her family, so she's not at home. I get home, and I come out of the car. And my key drops into the fluffy snow. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. Because I'm tired. I just traveled for 40 hours. I've just ministered for a week. I'm just trying to get inside. Come on, somebody. And now I can't find the keys on that dang on snow. Can I say dang on in church? Mm. Email Pastor Kyle, there's a problem. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I'm looking for the keys everywhere. And I remember after my fingers are freezing, a Brazilians in snow and cold, we don't get along real well. And then my frostbite is what you call it, isn't it? I mean, it's hurting. My pride is too much to call somebody at 3 in the morning. So I'm just trying to find these keys and I'm hurting, and I'm in pain, and I'm already going into cussing mode. Are you with me? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Come on now, talk to me. I'm already going to that place where it's like, ah. And, and, I, and, I, and I finally found my keys. 
after an hour looking for that little thing, I come into the house. I open the door. And heat came. Oi, oi, oi. You're thankful for heat at those moments. You know what I'm saying? Come on, a little hot chocolate by the fire now? Forget about it. Everything that I needed was available inside of the door. All I needed was the key. It was right there. Come on, I was just, I was just, oh my, I, could, I could smell the hot chocolate. Are you with me? Heat was coming through those old windows, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, I could touch it, but I couldn't get in. All I needed was the key. Faith is like a key that opens up the doors of heaven so that you can have what God has made it available on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. Everything has been given to us to live this amazing life. And we can participate, the Bible says, and participate in his divine nature, even escape the corruption of this world according to to first or second Peter, one of those. Are you with me? You can, you can come out of the corruption and the sin and the ordinary and step into the extraordinary when you have faith in the promises of God. Amen? I'm about to finish. I remember when I... How many of you watched MacGyver? Okay, nobody, just a couple. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to some 80s people. I'm, I've learned so much with MacGyver, you know. I've made some bombs, you know. Yeah. One day I found out I could get gasoline out of the car with a hose, you know. Just suck that hose. And I, t I got some gasoline out of Mama's car. I was like this big. And, uh, and, I, and I lit it on fire, you know, just to have a big boom. Not in the car, but like out in the neighbor's yard. And... <laughs> And um, I didn't know, MacGyver didn't tell me that gasoline can go like very far and make the whole thing burn. Uh, the entire yard was, you know, woods, was on fire. Fire department, police, I mean, the whole world came down to put this fire down. And today I'm thinking, if you just take a little gasoline, are you with me? Just a little, ga faith is a little gasoline in what God wants to do. You know, and he burns away. I believe that Jesus Christ wants to do so much for us. We just uh, don't have the audacity and the courage to step into those places. There's a reason why you haven't walked on water, why you haven't tried it yet. Are you with me? Somebody says to me all the time, why do you see all these blind people's eyes open in Africa, but you don't see it in, I don't see it in America. I've never seen one. I said, what was the last time you prayed for a blind person? Never. Well, that's why you haven't seen one. <laughs> I prayed for 1,000. 900 of them didn't get healed. 100 of them get healed. Hallelujah. Jesus is here to heal the sick. He's here to cast out every demon that has been plaguing you. He's here to fill you with his Holy Spirit. He's here to touch you with his own presence in life. He's here to show you how much he loves you, how much he desires you to be close. Amen? Can I finish with my favorite story in the Bible? And then we're going to pray. I think uh, Pastor Shannon can even come up now. And his team, you can come up. We're going to go into worship and get into the presence of God. How many of you wants to pray and be in the presence of God? How many of you wants to step in faith? How many of you know that faith and the miracle lives in the movement? How many of you know that the miracle lives in the movement? Jesus always told somebody to move before they were actually healed. You know, the 10 lepers that came, 10 men with leprosy, go and show yourself to the priest. What do you mean show ourselves to the priest? We show ourselves to the priest when we are healed. We are a mess right now. <laughs> There's wounds all over us. Move. Go to the priest. And as they were stepping in faith, healing came. I love this story so much. Mark chapter 2. Because 
these four friends decided that they are not going to live with their paralyzed friend anymore. They heard the stories about the paralyzed walking and this Jesus of Nazareth is praying for the sick. So they decided to take this boy, put him on a bed sheet of sorts or something, right? A mat of sorts and walk him all the way to the house of Jesus. How many of you know this story? They get to the house and the house is packed full. Inside, the Bible says, and out. Can you see them looking? How are we going to get inside of this house? And they do something crazy. Faith is a little crazy. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of what we have not seen yet. That word substance is Tido deed, the root of it is Tido deed. You know how many of you know what a Tido deed is? A Tido deed is a document that says the house is yours. So if somebody says the house is not yours, then the house is mine. Are you with me? The sub, I have something to show that the house is mine. Even though the house is not in my hand, it is. It's mine, it belongs to me. It's the substance of what we did not see. The evidence of what we hope for. These men decided to do something a little crazy. Something they've never done before. Sometimes faith requires this. To do something you've never done. Step out of your comfort zone. These men climbed the roof of Jesus' house. How audacious, how courageous, how full of faith. Can you see them just taking a hammer and just going after? They broke through Jesus' roof and lowered the men at Jesus' feet. Jesus turns to the men and says, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees, the teachers of the law said, you are crazy too. How blasphemous. Who are you to forgive a man's sin? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus says, which one is easier? Faith just came in the room. Here's what Jesus says. Which one is easier? To say to the man, your sins are forgiven, or to tell him to get up and walk? Here's the answer. It's much harder. Because you can see. The ID must be in Jesus' hand. He must carry the power right there because sin is in the heart and nobody can really see him. Has this man been forgiven or not? But everyone will see, is this the Messiah? Does this man really have the passport of sight as well? Is he really God? Is he really the power for God that, that he can forgive sins? And he turns to the men, to the harder of them all, and says, get up to your feet, pick up your mat, and go home. Stand up to your feet. Please. Jesus is powerful enough to wipe away sins. He showed it in that story. And he proved it to the world that he is God. And he is Savior. He is Lord. And he is the miracle man. Close your eyes with me. If you come in here today, you've never given your life to Jesus. Or if you've been far away from Jesus. Today is your day in which you're here, right, which you hear your sins are forgiven. This is the moment. Today is your day of salvation. I'm going to count on two, three. 
And if you want to come back to Jesus, or if you want to give your life to Jesus and ask him to forgive you, this morning is your morning. Don't wait another day. You might not have another day. Today is your day. You are here because God has brought you here. He has aligned all of the moments of your life to bring you here tonight and listen to the sound of my voice, to listen to his word. And he's calling your name. He loves you. He cares for you. In the count of three, if this is you, if you want to give your life to Jesus, come back to him. You're going to shoot your hand up. Are you ready? One, get your hand ready. Two, three, lift it up, lift it up. Yes, yeah, so many, lift it up, lift it up. Good, lift it up. Thank you, Jesus. Lift it up high. Yes. You that have your hand up. And the entire church, we're going to pray together right now. Can we say it together? Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead to give me life, to give me eternity. Forgive me. Forgive me my sins. The big ones, the little ones, forgive me. I love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, give it up for Jesus. We're going to go into worship for a moment. And as you are worshiping, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you're going to step here to the front. You're just going to worship God. He's going to speak to you. He's going to touch your heart. If you came here and you've been asking for the power of the Holy Spirit, today is the day in which you receive your gift. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. You have dreams, visions. You will prophesy. You will speak in tongues. You are going to have angels visiting you because that's the Bible. It's the book of Acts. That's what we read. It's what we want to see. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. The power of God will come upon you. The Bible says that Jesus told his disciples, don't go anywhere else. Stay in the city. The Holy Spirit will come. The one that I promised, the one my father promised will come. He will, he will come upon you with power. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Maybe you came here and you have been given a diagnosis. You are going to come to the front and today you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Come on. Today you came here suffering and in pain. You are going to come out of here dancing tonight. Come on. You've been dealing with demons. You have been listening to your insecurity so much. Now you have shrunk into half of who you are. Today, that devil is going to run away. You will be set free in the name of Jesus. This night is your breakthrough night. The miracle is in Jesus Christ, the miracle man. Lift up your hand, lift up your hand. In the middle of worship, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Faith will come upon you. You walk to the front. If you are sick, you walk to the front. If you've been in a motorcycle accident, you will come to the front. If you feel like you've been betrayed, you'll be holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness, you will come to the front. You've said to yourself, I've been stabbed in the back. You will come to the front. That knife will come out of you today in the name of Jesus Christ. If you've been trying to have a baby, today is the day in which God will open your womb and babies will come in the name of Jesus. I want you, in the count of three, faith is upon you to begin walking to the front and praising Jesus with Shannon. Leave your seats. This is the moment that you take a step of faith into God's glory, into His presence. You will lift your hand up. Some of you will kneel on the, on the floor. You will do something you've never done before. It's uncomfortable to you. It is not your
your denomination. It is not the way you've done in the past, but in your uncomfortability, Jesus will show up with your miracle. Let's praise God. of the supernatural power of God. This, more, this evening is a day in which you receive what you've been asking for. Depression will leave, will stay at the altar. Anxiety will stay at the altar. Your pain will stay at the altar. Your sadness, the Holy Spirit said to me, your sadness 
will stay at the altar. There is going to be a wave of laughter that will come here from this right side and it's going to sweep over and you're going to start to smile. You're going to start to laugh. You're going to start to enjoy life and the presence of God in a way you haven't had before. And it's going to be medicine to your bones. In the name of Jesus, joy is in this house tonight. Joy is in this house tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, may laughter come. Let it be healing to their bones. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift up your hand, lift up your hand. The power of God is here to fill you full with His Holy Spirit. I'm going to count until three. In the count of three, you're going to open your mouth. And you're going to start to speak in other tongues. You're going to meet God right where He is. It's not going to come automatically. You cannot step on the water by not stepping in the water. You have to get out of the boat. You have to open your mouth. You have to lift your hands. You have to ask the Holy Spirit. And He will fill you full right now. One, two. to me and your anxiety has gotten too much you're going to put your hand in your head you're going to close your eyes you've been believing the lies of the enemy right now I break the power of depression over your life I bind and break the power of anxiety over your life release a peace that surpasses understanding over you. Jesus will guard your heart and your mind in Him. Faith is coming to you like a flood tonight. Like a flood tonight. Father, thank you for freedom. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. If you're already speaking in tongues, you should lift your hand up and continue to speak in tongues.
God. I want you to put your hand in your heart like this. The Holy Spirit, when He comes upon you, He comes with His fire. That fire makes everything that's in you holy. It removes corruption. It's a holy pure. Fire purifies. And fire is power beyond what you can have it inside of you. So it, it comes out of you and it overflows out of you. It's, it, it, it makes you attractive to the world. Listen now. Jesus changed the world, the planet with 12 men who was on fire. Don't stay lukewarm. Don't stay cold in your in, in shrink in your corner and try to do the religious thing by opening your Bible and never experiencing God. Go to church because your mama told you so and that's now you're used to it. It's part of your habit. Listen, there is a faith adventure available for you and that is the best life in the world. And right now, I want all of you to leave here with the fire of God. Yes. So, as we begin to worship, put one hand here. I'm just ministering faith to you. This is a sign of connection between Jesus and your heart. That's where faith lives. Right now, the power of God will come upon you. And life will be exciting with Jesus. You will laugh with God. You will enjoy God. You will walk walk hand in hand with Jesus every day and he will challenge you at times to step in faith and you will see his breakthrough in your life and he will see that he will show you that he's crazy about you and he wants to live his life with you but put your hand here the other one is a sign of worship you lift it up like this it's the sign of connection between you and Jesus in your heart fire of God Come upon your church right now. Be released here at Auburn Hills. We're going to finish this up as we go into worship. And every one of you will open your mouth. You speak in other tongues. You will pray to Jesus. And the Bible says that when you are weak, the Holy Spirit will intercede for you. And he will pray even when you don't know how to pray with intercessory, with wordless groans. Right now, we're going to go into worship. And I want you to take that step of faith. And you're going to move your lips. You're going to be filled with the power of God. Just like he was in Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and they spoke in other tongues and they prophesied. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 19. The Holy Spirit came, filled the disciples, and they went on to preach the gospel. They went on to show their ID everywhere. Signs and wonders followed them everywhere they went. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, fill every man, fill every woman that came hungry in this place tonight with the power of your Holy
you, God. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify you, Father. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, thank you. Thank you for meeting us. Father, you're always so eager to meet with us. Your door is always open. You're always coming out to meet with us. God, I pray in Jesus' name that the hunger that we're displaying this evening, Lord, would continue. God, that we would always be eager to meet with you, to open the door to you, to give you entry, Lord, into every part of our lives, every part of our day. Father God, thank you. Thank you for what you've done here throughout this day. And Father, it's because we've come with expectation and anticipation and we expressed ourselves and we appealed to you and you hear and you respond. And Father God, I pray that that would be our way of doing things continually, not just when we have a special service because you're eager to do things in and through our lives all the time, every day. And we just want to be a people, dear God, that are available to you. So thank you. Thank you for renewing us. Thank you for replenishing us. Thank you for touching us. And God, we're anticipating testimonies, stories, of what you've done here this evening and what we'll see you continue to do in the days ahead. So God, I speak your blessing over every man and woman in this house, those that were with us today, those who consider this place their home, those dear God that you'll draw here in the days ahead. Pray your blessing over each one. So before I let you go, I'll say this, and then maybe Pastor Shannon, you can send us out with a song that the Lord places on your heart. But like you, I love being here. I really do. I, I love being at this church. I, 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 I love getting up on Sunday mornings. I love to interact with you. I love being here on Wednesday nights. I love being here throughout the week. I have the greatest job on earth. I get to work with my friends. I get to share vision with them and they with me. And if I had my way, I'd probably be here all the time. But that was never the intention. Jesus never intended for that. I told you before, but I, I find it interesting that in the book of Acts, it really doesn't tell us a lot about what their services were like. And I think it's because Jesus knew we would try to copy every single thing that happened in those services, and he wanted us to lean on him. What we do read in the book of Acts is what the church did out there. And by seeing what they did out there, we could pick up on what was happening in those services when they gathered together. Friends, it's not just about what's happening here. It's now taking what's happening here and taking it out there to a world that is in desperate need and who needs Jesus. And we have Jesus. Amen? So, Father God, as we go from this place, we go filled with faith and we're going to go out with our eyes wide open looking for opportunities to declare Jesus out there to make it clear that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life out there, that indeed this world needs salvation, and gratefully, you're still saving people. Oh, Lord, we really want Jesus to return. We do want him to come back. But, Lord, in the meantime, in the meantime, we want to bring as many people to Jesus as we can, and we want to bring people to Jesus. So, Lord, help us take what's happened here today and help us to translate it out there. And then let us bring back stories back in this house to excite us about all that you want to do. We pray your blessing on these people. We pray your blessing on Fernando. Use him. Continue to use him around this world. Bless him, his family. Meet every need as they continue to put you first. But we love you. And God, as we sing one more song of praise and then leave this house, we go in complete confidence because we are following you the God who will do 
you will do exceeding abundantly above you will do things greater than we can dream about greater than we can think about far greater than we can ask for and god we are anticipating that because you're a great god in jesus name amen pastor shannon team you lead us